In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this effect. In Blender. Let's get straight to it. Before we start, I have to tell you that this tutorial is not suited for total beginners as I'm not going to be including basic shortcuts. Step 1. The setup. First of all, choose your object. It can be anything. But here's the catch. It needs to have at least a few faces. Let me demonstrate to you why. I'm going to use a cube for the sake of this tutorial. I'm going to add the cube. Now that we have added our object, we need to add an empty. I'm going to add a cube. You can choose whatever empty you like. I'm gonna scale it by the z-axis by 0.1 so it looks like this. Now you can place it anywhere you want. It doesn't matter. We're gonna select our object and go into edit mode. I'm going to subdivide this because it doesn't have enough faces. Now we need to add a vertex group. We're gonna go into edit mode, select all the vertices and then go to the object data properties. We need to add a new vertex group. You need to select all the vertices and assign them to the vertex group. Now you deselect and select to check if it worked and was assigned correctly. The next step is adding a vertex weight proximity modifier to our object. Go to the modifiers tab and under edit we add the vertex weight proximity. We need to select the vertex group we just created and the target object is gonna be the empty. Set the proximity mode to geometry and the fall off to smooth. The next step is gonna be important. I'm gonna select the empty, put it to the cursor and then I'm going to select the object and switch from object mode to weight paint. As you can see this is red. This is the part where we're gonna need to play around with the lowest and highest value of the vertex weight proximity modifier. You're gonna just turn this up and I'm gonna put the highest to 1.2 maybe and the lowest to 1.1. Just for your understanding, the red areas are not affected by the vellum growth. The blue areas are affected by the vellum growth. Here is a visualization. In the next step, we're gonna switch back to object mode. With our object selected, we're gonna add a GeoNodes modifier. I'm gonna pull up the timeline and switch to Geometry Node Editor. Press New, and now we only need to add two nodes. The first one is a Capture Attribute node. Put it in the middle. Now we need to add a Value node and connect it to the Capture Attribute. Delete it, we don't need it anymore. Now do what I do. Go to the Modifiers tab and press this little button here. Looks like a present. Under value, choose the vertex group we created. Our object is still selected. We need to go into weight paint and under output attribute, type in vellum. Hit enter, go back to object mode. We will use cloth simulation for the vellum growth. Go to the physics tab and add a cloth modifier. Now let's set up the cloth simulation. I'm gonna tell you the values I'm going to use. If you know what you're doing, you can create your own simulation. Uh, set the quality steps to 12. The speed multiplier to 0.35, vertex mass to 15 kilograms and air viscosity to 0.5. Under stiffness, the first three to one, the last one to 0.1. Under damping, the first three also to one, and the last one to 0.25. Skip internal springs, activate the pressure, put it to 12, go to shape, choose our vertex group as the pin group, set the shrinking factor to minus point. 3, 5. Under collision, set the quality steps to 12. And under field weights, turn down the gravity to 0. Now we can go to cage and bake the simulation. Once the bake is finished, replay your simulation to check for results. If you do not like the results, you can change some settings of the cloth simulation and bake again. Baking might take a few minutes depending on your PC specs or on the complexity of the mesh you're using. If it's too much for your machine, turn down the quality. I'm going to leave it exactly like this. Now let's go on to the final step of assigning materials. In the shader editor, create a new material for your object. Delete the principled BSDF, add a metallic BSDF. Connect it to the material output. I'm going to turn down the roughness and change the base color to dark gray. Now. Select your material, but do not select the output. That's important. Press Ctrl G and then navigate to this little icon right here. It's gonna bring us to the parent node tree. Boom. Now you're gonna duplicate this, put it above and press on the little two. It's gonna make it individual. 
So if you edit one of these, the other one doesn't change with it. Add in a mix shader, connect both of these into the mix shader, connect it to the output. Now add in a color ramp and connect the color output of the color ramp with the factor input of the mix shader. Now add in a attribute node and connect the factor of the attribute node with the factor input of the color ramp. The name we're gonna put in here is the same name we gave as the value of the output attribute from our geometry nodes. You can choose any name, but you have to make sure that this name in here is the same as this name right here, okay? That's it, basically. I'm gonna uh, delete this metallic BSDF and add a glass BSDF. Connect it right here. Uh, we're gonna check if the materials are assigned correctly. Go to world. I'm gonna change the color to sky texture and put the sun elevation maybe to like 2%. Go into rendered view. I'm gonna shade smooth. Put a subdivision surface modifier right here. And now you can see this is the end result. This is the setup, okay? This is everything you need to know.